Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever the hell you're listening to us. This is Drunk Discussions, and we're your hosts. I'm Paul. And I'm Sean. And we have a fun one for you guys today. We're going to get into some of the stuff that's going on in the world, the news, social media, the holidays, whatever we want. And the holidays are upon us. But before we do all that, how was your week, Connor? What are you drinking on? Uh, I am drinking on tequila. Tequila. I heard you hurt Kirkland. yourself. You hurt yourself? Kirkland tequila. Yeah, I, um, I have to go in. I'm going to wait. I, okay, so holiday Christmas party was Saturday night. And it was one of those parties that we got there at 2 p.m. on Saturday, and I left at 3 p.m. on Sunday, and I did not sleep that entire time. Uh, so what that, was, that was a good party then. Oh, well, oh. you see all this alcohol right here? <laughs> they just gave it to you. They're like, we don't want this. You can have it. Yes. And uh, the fridge is also full. Uh, what is up, Cub? Uh, and yeah, so anyways, holiday party. Um the owner of the company was like, every single year, I boy, uh, I boy wrestle. Damn it, Jim. Uh, he's in the chat. He said, hello, boys. And I read boys. Yeah, we boy wrestle. Uh, we arm, oh. uh, I got weird. Uh, we arm wrestle. And it's, it's like a tradition. And every year he's beat me. Well, this year, I fucking slaughtered him. Now, is it true? I heard that you, uh, you said that if you beat him, you got a raise? Yeah, so I got a, a 15% raise. Oh, so was the injury worth it? No. No, I think I am suffering right now from depression. I really hate it. Like, like, so I think the reason why I went so hard during the actual um, event itself is because the day before I, I was banned on TikTok, permanent ban on TikTok, and I lost everything. Um, 80, 81,000 followers. Um, and I was like, you know what? Maybe this is a sign to start fresh. Actually, like I know what to do and what not to do now after growing a channel that big. I was like, I know what I can do now to to grow and start in a direction I actually really wanted to go. I wanted to. Yeah, I already told you this before. I wanted to get away from the political side and focus more on fun comedy, but also fitness. And I think it gave me an opportunity to do that. But I realized if you've ever had to make a new TikTok account, it is a cesspool of fucking dog shit you have to swim through before the algorithm learns what you like right. and holy fuck it i'm getting i'm getting the eyebrow people you know the girls that are like just bouncing and they're like moving their eyes and going Ooh, and so, like they cross-eyed themselves and they to music oh, i hate so it have you have you got to the part of the algorithm where they're the um the ais or not ais they're the uh like they pretend to be like part of a video game like the oh yeah uh, npcs npc yeah they're not pisses me off that they have thousands of people giving them money attention everything and they're just pretending to be an npc like there's a few uh, people that are very very good at it and i, I yeah. will actually give them the benefit of the doubt because but i've seen people like fall like creators that i really like actually enjoy their content fall into that trap of and now that is literally all they do they're like crushing eggs on their head they're i mean ketchup all over their face i'm like what it's like what will you do for clout it's that's what it's turned into coming from me who has an only fans and shakes my ass for money. Yeah. What, yeah. You know, <laughs> what will we do? Um, that being said, yeah. Toast, 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 oh, cheers. So cheers. I'm, I, I'm still doing my, my advent calendar, my bourbon mm -hmm. calendar. So I'm oh, on, real quick. I'm, I did tear my bicep though. That is the point of, did the you get an M did you get an M did you get an MRI? I know my body very well, Paul, it's been three days and I can still not pick up a cup of coffee never know i mean you could have been a really bad sprain i've had some bad sprains in my life through different sports including baseball which you know you use your arm to throw connery yeah and it felt I've like i tore something and i didn't and it felt like it because i strained it so bad so the thing is is it black and blue is it black and blue in that area no but it is swollen and hot oh those are it's, signs okay yeah I, I trust me i looked at all the signs i know my body well, very very well go to I know get exactly an mri to know for sure I'm going to wait should. four more days, give it a week before I say, hey, let's give in. Yeah. Oh, which is fair. Ooh. But either way, I'm drinking bourbon as usual. I, I didn't do 13 yesterday. I forgot about it. So I'm doing that today. Got some Traverse City. So we'll see how that oh. is. It smells hot. Hot. So cheers. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Right, that being said. Let's, let's roll, roll that, that intro. intro. Yeah. One, two, three. I'm a type two civilization hipster. Jesus is watching you, you're gonna all burn in hell. 
That's why Antarctica is off limits. It's just a fun bunch of penguins fucking each other, and it causes a chain reaction. People Let's lose their the fucking minds. Started. Trust me, man. I've seen some shit. I have to be in orbit. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. You should probably go get that checked and shove a <laughs> finger in your bum. You're laughing, but it's already in there. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining Drunk Discussions Podcast. First question is, when is the beard coming back? Ha ha. As fast as it wants to. Uh, it's coming. It's 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 coming back. Like, I've got... Do not come. Do not come. I, I'm going to come. Uh, <laughs> it is coming back. It's going to take a minute. Um, I've grown my hair back out because I got a portrait of me. Uh, an artist sent me a show, portrait of myself. Oh, the portrait. Is it near you? Yeah, it's behind me. Here, let me grab it. He can't hear me or oh, anyone. I make fun of him for it. It's great. It's a beautiful portrait. But lady, where's the dim- where's the pupils? Look at this. This beautiful is so portrait. fucking cool. But he oh, looks like it's switching back and forth every time you talk. There we go. <laughs> I know, I know, I am because it looks like you're blind and you you got fucking like flashbang and you have you. no pupils. Hold on a second, let me come back. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, it, it caught me off guard. Like she said, she, so uh, her name's Femme, uh, Ar- Armisay, Ar- Ar- I am going to fuck it up every time. Anyways, uh, she reached out to me and she was like, hey, uh, you were working out and you were just sitting in your garage kind of recovering and I, I screenshotted you and she sent me the screenshot. She was like, I'd really love to paint this. Are you comfortable with that? I'll send it to you. I was like, yeah, y- y- absolutely. A hundred fucking percent. Lutely, yes, because in my eyes. I want to be that man that you walk into my house and above the fireplace mantle is a portrait of the king of the house. It's a First little all, narcissistic. I was going to say that. It's so narcissistic. Two, two, two questions. Two questions. One, is she following you on your new account, hopefully? Yes. Um, so I put out a blast yeah. on Twitter, Facebook, and my OnlyFans. I said, hey, uh, look, account band, if you can, help me get back to it. And um, Jim, out of all people... Oh, uh, Jim, you're amazing, Jim. You really are. Dude added easily, I think, 700 followers or maybe more. I don't know. Like, Jim, he got me back. brother out. <laughs> Damn, man. Uh, Come on. He, well, he was like, I want to see you back live. I was like, trust me, dude. I, I've been I do trying too. to get to that stage so I can do them with you. I feel like we would have fun. But second question. Yeah. Second question. Where are the pupils? Uh, so they're there. So the actual screenshot of me, I'm like looking off to the distance and I think it's the, angle. Oh, okay. They're there. It's, that's the one thing that I'm looking at. I'm like, maybe if the eyes are a little bit to the left, but you look like you're blind. It kind of, but, but to it's be fair, well done. The rest of the body, the hair, she got the, the tattoo the shading. Yeah. All like, of it's awesome. Um, oh, all of it's awesome. Way better yeah, than yeah. I could ever do. Well, Hey, she got a hell of a talent. Well, Incredible. She's, a thousand new followers is how much she got me. Yeah, sorry. No, that incredible. Um, and I was like, Jim. So, so Jim, Jim, <laughs> Jim, help a brother. Jim, out. help help a brother out, boy. <laughs> but she, uh, she, she's actually a pretty cool person. I mean, uh, I've I've talked to her over the phone a few times because I, it's, it's, I I've talked to Jim too over the phone a few times. But uh, she teaches courses uh like painting classes for uh, really? mentally disabled and uh disabled individuals so she's My honestly heart. just a very big sweetheart in general and she, no that that's incredible like dang and yeah so that showed I, up I, and it just i, I used awesome. to draw i was never the greatest painter but i mean i used to draw i mean i draw my tattoos uh, so yeah. i can draw but uh, that's why I, I do all my stuff in black and white and i don't do color is because like i i'm not good with it and it's impressive it's how she was able mind. to do it well, yeah, obviously. I didn't want to say it, but no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> I, uh, I do everything black, white, and gray, like because it's what I see. Okay. It would be pretty cool to set like a color palette of like blues, greens, and reds and oranges and all that shit in front of you, just a multiple array, and say, "Hey, paint," you know what you see. No, because you're gonna end up being orange with like fucking different colored hair. You look like a a muscular Donald Trump. No one wants that. I mean. I mean, well, there are there's some a few. That, yeah, there's some people that would want that. There's a lot of gay uh, conservatives out there. I that, that's far <laughs> and few and in between, but they're there. I just think of the Family Guy episode where where it's like we're gay but we're red or whatever. Like that was that was a funny episode. I have oh. no idea what that is about, but yeah. Oh, it's, it's it's a funny episode. You should watch it sometime. It's dumb, but every Family Guy's dumb. It's great. Um, so a while ago. Long, long ago in a distant episode, far, far away. 
we talked okay. Mandela effect and specifically one company fruit of the loom, the cornucopia. Yes. The cornucopia. Guess what happened over the weekend? Somebody found an old piece of clothing from the 1980s that had a cornucopia on it. Yes, they did. Seriously, They did. Multiple. And it's there. And it's there. So then they tagged Fruit of the Loom. Fruit of the Loom got outed and one of their, a whistleblower, they're calling a whistleblower, an insider has said that this has been a marketing strategy for them ever since people started talking about Mandela, Mandela effects. Effect. And it has worked. Their marketing took this and ran with it and it worked. They got called out. So everyone that sat here and they're like, no, Fruit of the Loom definitely had a cornucopia on it. And they kept denying it. You're not crazy. They did. They lied to you. So now a corporation has li- blatantly gotten caught lying, saying that it was never there. And the best part is, Connor, on their website, you go to their main website, it shows their logos throughout the year, like throughout the year since they started. They scrubbed the internet. They scrubbed it, dude. They removed the cornucopia on purpose. They did this on purpose. It's genius. It, honestly, it's genius. If you're thinking of it in a marketing way, it's genius. It worked. It worked. They got millions of dollars from this millions of sales from it there's obvious proof here though too that they scrubbed the internet because there there had to have been legitimate photos that they were able to take down some way somehow some way some way how i don't know but it it it, it literally it pissed me off because then i'm sitting there going like what else what other companies have done something like kind of a marketing ploy or they're saying that us as the public's crazy that that's never happened that makes me a little... Does that not irritate you a little bit? I feel they like... They do that, it all that, the time. Look at Pfizer. What do you mean? Oh, you like with their, their vaccines? What do you their mean? Death rates, everything. What do you mean? I, I can't talk about it too much more because I know what happens if we talk about it a lot, okay? I'm, you, not getting our, you, I'm not getting our channel taken <laughs> down. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> suppression, my friend, suppression. Uh, <laughs> Okay, we won't get into that. But it, it still was a talking point where I was like, this made me instantaneously mad because he's taking his shirt off. Here it comes. Oh, no. no, this is bad. I realized I looked just like a floating head there for a second. So I was like, all right, mix it up. You, gotta, you know, for being in Florida, you got to work on the tan a little bit more, baby. It's winter time in Florida. The sun's still out. It doesn't rain that much, right? Dude, you know how much cloud coverage we'd have, we've had? Well, I haven't seen the sun in... Probably a week I was ago. I was there three weeks ago and I was sweating my ass off. There's a big storm that's about to come through. A big giant uh, low pressure systems moving into the Gulf. It's going to spawn tornadoes and a bunch yeah. of shit throughout the state. That is that happened. You you heard about the the tornadoes through Clarksville and uh, Tennessee and Kentucky, right? Holy a good, shit! A good a very good friend of ours, a man that has been on this podcast himself, was one of the OGs. The tornado hit behind his house. He has wow. video of it landing. I mean, like, you know a suburb, right? You have Wait, your house, the neighbor, Tyler. J- what? Tyler lives in Clarksville, Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, shit. It happened okay. behind his house. It, the, the F Category 3, F3, whatever, tornado. He has a video of it. Debris and all. Literally, like, his neighbor's house is across the street. It's behind it. And I, I called him multiple times, making sure they're okay. They were in the basement. They were... They were a little freaked out, but they're, they're good now. But that was a little crazy. And I blame Florida. It's all your hot air. All your hot shit is coming up here making tornadoes. I blame you. So there's... Oh, man. You want to get into conspiracy side? What? Like, we make tornadoes? No, 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 no. Just a different <laughs> I, was gonna, I was like, I mean, excuse me? We went from the Mandela effect. Mandela effect, obviously, there's conspiracy yeah, it's about it. It's a conspiracy right now. Come on. Right, yeah. Let's have a shot. Cheers. Um, Chikira. Mm. All right. Let's talk about leave the world behind if you've seen anything on tiktok it's kind of the new biggest craze from netflix so what is leave the world behind i just got done watching it and leave the world behind is essentially spoilers of course uh it's a family vacation that's been disrupted by a uh cyber attack now the cyber attack knocks out their uh, devices. They're staying in Airbnb, but the owners of the Airbnb show up to the house. Now, the owners um, kind of just plays a part in the stock industry, and he knows ups and downs, and he has a lot of networks that are, you know, big. I'm talking multi, uh, mil- or multi-billion dollar uh, military defense contractors, uh, you name it, right? And he got the word, hey, it's time to go ahead and 
he, he had a conversation with one of his networks and the, the network basically just said, good luck. And that was it. So he, he was like, I'm going to go back to my, my house that's secluded off of uh, somewhere, probably New Jersey. Right. Um, big ass, beautiful multi-million dollar house. Anyways, there's multiple stages that happen throughout this. And this is where the conspiracy well, comes in. Is this that I've seen a video a trailer where they're like, this is our house. And they're like, this is your house. Is that that, that trailer? No. Oh. No, this is the one that has like the deer. Everything's about deer, right? And huh. the deer are actually completely pointless in the movie. It just talks about migration of the deer because of this attack. But uh, there's three <laughs> levels that he talks about in the movie. Uh, and it's the cost effective way to overthrow a country. And the most cost effective way, which you and I have talked about on this podcast multiple times, is you attack infrastructure. Yes. You add in confusion and then you let the rest of the uh, country t- collapse on itself, which yeah, they, like the people do the problem themselves. They're the ones that like, you just don't, you take away the things that they need most with electricity, common technology, blow the grid. And then people alone will destroy the rest because yep. we don't know what else to do. People would lose their fucking minds. We witnessed it in 2020 and a lot of people, and I think what happened was the belief of how well everything is like people bitch about how everything kind of sucks right now, which let's be honest, it does. It does. But it doesn't at the same time. Like we have the luxury of internet. And that cracks me up whenever I see somebody on TikTok comment on old, one of my old videos. Uh, they're like, you don't understand how hard it is right now. I was like, as you're putting this message on the internet, through your thousand dollar device yeah well you don't, you don't know, know how good thousand. you have it they, they could have a, a, a lower brain one, but whatever yeah either way regardless you still have communication with people right imagine an entire blackout no internet no power no cell service no radio service and no satellite phones right so they tested it out no satellite phone so the the concept behind it was they shut off the power grid Next thing you know, they added in confusion by dropping off these flyers. Now, some of them were in Iranian, some of them were in Korean, some of them were, I guess Iranian would be Arabic, Um, right? Yes. Yeah, Arabic, um, different languages throughout the country to add confusion among the mix. They sent in drones that dropped thousands of flyers over populated areas to add in the the fear, right? And then um, there was these loud attacks to their ear Ear, ear canals similar to what happened in Cuba um, where people lost their teeth and shit and had negative effects from it. Their eardrums were blown, things like that. Anyways, the reason why this is such a talked about movie right now is because the Obamas were behind the movie. Michelle and Barack Obama were behind the movie. Like now, they were the producers? So they weren't the producers. Julia Roberts in it. Ethan Hawke is in it. Um, Kevin Bacon's in it, right? Which in itself, high. You love me some bacon. Logan's glad you're addressing this. Just watched it. Some things, though, I I I went into the movie already knowing what kind of to expect because of TikTok. I was like, okay, I see all these. I already know the premise of the story. I want to focus on the details. So I'm about to talk about things that I haven't seen somebody talk about yet because I was focusing in on the background of the movie. So. Throughout the movie, let's go ahead and do this. I was going to say, we're going to have to clip this shit and put it on TikTok. Damn. Let's do this. Let me move over real quick. There we go. So people can see what I'm talking about. All right. So let's move that down. There we go. So this is Leave the World Behind. Some of the things that I noticed. So if you've watched the movie, in the beginning of the movie, they're, they're going to a, a mm-hmm. beach. Um, I would. I don't know. They're going to a beach and... Uh, as they're laying there, they notice this oil tanker out in the background. And five minutes later, they're like, this is getting really close. Next thing you know, it crashes in. Well, the name on the ship was the White Lion. Hmm. The White Lion is, isn't it a name of an oil tanker. It's an actual English privateer operating ship that operated. Uh, it, w- it was the first ship to bring the Africans of the English colony of Virginia in 1619. So a lot of people are saying, oh, they're making this movie to warn people what's coming. I think what it is, is bringing up parts of the past when it comes to slavery. Okay. Because the Obamas were involved in it. And I'm not saying that as like a direct side of it. I'm saying this is what I've recognized. And I've got 
clips, not clips. I've got screenshots from the movie as I watched it. Okay. So it is a very thought provoking movie. I completely agree, Logan. Um, so the white line, it was a, a year before their arrival of the Mayflower in new England. Um, so the white line is the name of the oil tanker that doesn't exist. I looked it up. It doesn't exist. This is the only ship named the white lion, right? Right. Off the bat talks about slavery, talks about being the first ship to bring slaves over involved in the slave trade. There's that next the QR code. So in the movie, there is a quick flash on the TV. So the first thing is this is an emergency broadcast. It's a blue screen. As they go to bed on the TV, they pan over to the TV. It flashes areas that have been impacted by a cyber attack. And they're showing the United States. And right over Virginia, Gade, which he's in here. Right, <laughs> uh, right over Virginia is a QR code. Now, a lot of people did not recognize it off the first bat. I, I, uh, the only reason why I knew about it is because of TikTok. So that was brought into the question. The QR code in Leave the World be, leaves behind a creepy website. Now, the website is of Lake Shawnee Abandoned Amusement Park. Mm -hmm. Speculations have shown, though, that this has been a place that, because Obama's involved in it, and this was something that you had to pay attention. Like, I, I didn't even see it. I knew it was there because of TikTok. I didn't see it the first time. I had to scroll back. I was like, oh, no, there's, there's the QR code. Uh, right. You can't scan it, though. You had to, like, adjust it, have a still image to be able to scan it takes you to Lake Shawnee Abandoned Amusement Park. Now, the thing about this amusement park and the reason why people are saying that it is important is they are conspiring on it being a place of an underground bunker. Right. Now, this was, let's see, the purchase of the property was in the 1920s. The reason why it shut down, though, is because of freak deaths. There's a Native American bur burial ground of violent deaths, freak accidents, and a bunch of other things that have happened here. So it's been shut down and it's been abandoned. That right there is kind of makes sense to me, right? Yeah. Think yeah. about the White Lion. The White Lion comes in, one of the first ships of the, before the Mayflower, bringing over slave trade. You, even before that, though, yes, you did. Christopher Columbus sailed over in 1492. What? 1492. Okay, so a 200-year difference. You had violent deaths, and this is a massive burial ground of kids, adults, everything. You name it right here. Okay, let's keep moving forward. Now, in the yeah, movie... Yeah, I'm a little lost right now. I know. It will kind of make sense. It will okay. kind of make sense. It won't, but it will. Okay, okay. In the movie, the uh, G.H. Scott, or whatever his name is, the owner of the house, the, the stockbroker, has a daughter. Now, the daughter... You see this little tattoo right here? Yeah, on her it, shoulder? It says 96. Now, obviously, she was born in 1996, right? So you would think. Or what major events happened in 1996? Honestly, couldn't tell you right off the... I was born a year before. Comprehensive nuclear test treaty. Uh, ban on testing nuclear weapons happened. Uh, Clinton won his second election. The space shuttle happened, and they are, there is uh, images of the daughter of the family that's staying with the Airbnb wearing a NASA shirt, so the NASA Curiosity rover, all that stuff kind of was around the same time. Um, Prince Charles and Princess uh, Diana divorce. Uh, there was another one, though, that caught me off guard. It wasn't the Nintendo 64. Biological Weapons Factory in Iraq uh let's see there was something else biological there was a lot of stuff happening in 1996 that were like oh my god this so like what does that have to do with it? is it just like the little things they're putting in there for you to like they're like easter egg, like little not easter eggs little like eggs to find about it or something like that's where i'm confused like what's that do with the plot it's kind of the point of the movie, though. The, the point oh, of the movie really? is curiosity. You are very curious about it. Now, uh, spoilers. At the end of the movie, the camera pans up. Uh, it, it's, it's pointed at uh, the daughter that I just showed you with the 96 on her tattoo, or 96 tattoo, and the mother of the Airbnb family, uh, Roberts, Julia Roberts, or whatever her name is. By the way, massive bitch in the movie. Listen. She's a, if, she's a great actress. She, she if, knows what to do. If you're a woman... That treats your man like that, 
hold on, hold, just stop it. Uh, but anyways, it, it, it points at a cam- uh, the camera at them. They're, ca- they're like covering their mouse like in shock. And then the camera p- pans up. By the way, the, film- uh, the videography of the actual movie itself, the fucking nominal. Holy shit. I loved it. It was one of the best movies I've seen when it comes to videography. But anyways, the camera comes up through the trees and overlooks New York and a nuclear bomb is going off. Multiple bombs are going off. The the city's at war. Like it it it, it takes you on a roller coaster ride of emotion. Um, imagine being out in the woods, disconnected from the rest of civilization, but you already know there's attacks happening. You just don't know about it until you end up seeing it. And Some people that's the end of the movie. I, I think the worst part of it is, is there's a lot of people wish that would happen. Some people are like, I wish it would be the end of the world so I could be, you know, minimalistic and I can be like, you know, living out and on the farm and shit. It's like, I don't think that's, you get how it happened. People are terrible. I think of like The Walking Dead, right? Right. And not the zombies themselves, but like The Walking Dead, I feel like the problem when Walking Dead was not the zombies, it was the people. The people were the worst problems. Like they were the, the ones people, making their own type of government. Of, they were the ones killing other people. Going out of to eleven war with seasons, yeah, ten of them were the people. The people's the problem. problem. Yeah, that's what would happen. Like you could have your perfect little life going on in there. You know, your little homestead, you and your family, your little commune going on. All it takes is another rival fucking territory to come in and rob you, kill you, and take everything you want. Because people would do that. So it wouldn't be that simplistic when it comes to all out fucking. You know catastrophic failure of this fucking world of of civilized society so I mean, that scares me it scares a lot of people but some people like literally encourage it i'm like why like you have we really do like you said before we have it very nice we really we, do out of all of the generations before us we are probably the most comfortable generation and that's Agreed. very hard but easy to say because we have gone through multiple uh economic collapses we've gone through the pandemic we've gone through um proxy wars we've gone through a lot of shit that's kind of fucks with and we've seen shit that no other generation unless they were actually in war have seen um mm-hmm. and well, technically our generation has seen war <laughs> like we have but not to the extent of like storm war the one or two yeah. yeah yeah not all out war or vietnam you know we haven't had that uh i mean they're the generation two generations above us did but you know that's, that's my different. father fucking did shit. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm going to watch. What is this on? It's on Netflix. Of course. The one thing I don't have. Cool. I. You can't I give me yours either. You. I don't have Netflix either, but I know. Okay. 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 I'll send okay. you. I'll I got you, you bro. I got Desert, you. Boo. So does uh, Logan's in the chat or Desert Storm even. So Desert Storm in itself. It's hard to hear Paul. I have, I adjusted you. Don't worry about that. Okay, I was like, I had you turned down because the last time you had the mic closer. Sorry, it's my fault. My fault. Uh, the podcast listeners, you guys won't notice a difference. This is Twitch only. Um, yeah. So, anyways, a very thought provoking movie. I genuinely enjoyed it because it made me curious on digging deeper into possibly things that could be seen behind the scenes. Um, could there be a giant base under the Shawnee? Oh, yeah, there probably is. Be. I mean, you've heard of Camp David, right? Oh, Gade's in the chat. You can have my Netflix is what you he said. Can't, you can't do that anymore, Gade. They stopped that. Oh, yeah. You can't share. Um, talk about three steps. Is it like a three-step process? Oh, well, we've already talked about, about that, Logan. Yeah, yeah already, so the three steps, uh, For to reiterate, the three steps is uh, block out infrastructure, confuse, and then invade. Yes. Um, then but that's... who... Who's invading in the movie? Do they even go into that? No, no. They don't. They, so they it's like, like you said, it keeps you. It's a, it's a movie that's going to keep you on edge the whole time. The, so they thinking they could definitely make a second to it, but the second movie would be about survival because that's what it would come down to in an event like that. It'd be survival. This isn't survival. This is but what is it happens. Like Red before. Dawn mixes meets modern era kind of thing. Then like yeah. Wolverines fighting back. Isolation, chaos, civil war. Yeah, those are the yeah, it's, three it's, steps. It's it's just a modern modern red dawn. It is. Um without actually seeing who the enemy is. You don't right. know who it is. Well, it could have been another, the United if States. An, if they make an oh that's that's like that's that's like my worst fear, and I also like the most realistic thing is like the yeah. United States turns against itself somehow, or like you know, it's so corrupt that it, it itself implodes on purpose. Like People are like that would never happen. There's no way. It's like eh, it's 
Yeah, but never say never, you know. So let me go ahead and pull this off real quick. Um, we have we this ourselves. as well yeah, that we just said. happened one day ago, two days ago. Cyber attacks have started in the United States. Uh, so Russia and China have been caught inflicting cyber attacks on U.S. soil, uh, going after both infrastructure, communications, bank transactions, you name it, they've already started. And that's why a lot of people right now are saying that movie was a warning. Yeah. So it's a warning, but like... I what, have up the article. In right real... Now, the I way. get it. I get it. I'm looking at it. Yeah. But in reality, if it really was a warning to the average American, what can they do? Stock shelves? Get stuff saved up? Like, that's... The, in the end, it's not, there's nothing you can do to stop it. If, you, if, it's, if it's what you're... What you're explaining to me... There's nothing you can really do as an average American. If you're a billionaire or millionaire, like, yeah, you could probably transfer your money and leave and, and move somewhere else. But, like, for us, blue collar, middle class, or even upper middle class, you're fucked. There's nothing you can do. And, I, and I, I've thought about it. Like, I'm sitting here like, oh, man, I kind of want to be a prepper. But at the same time, strategically, I'm in a horrible fucking situation because I'm in one That's of the suburban. largest suburban area in the United States. Yeah, you're screwed. I am landlocked. Like there's nope. a, you're not landlocked. You're surrounded by water. Landlocked would mean you'd have land all the way around you. Oh yeah, sorry, not landlocked. You're I a peninsula. Am... I'm you a peninsula one... on a peninsula. Yeah, you have one way out. Yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking about it like I'm completely fucked. But if I honestly, boat. honestly, if you want to know what to do, here's what you do. Don't tell anyone what you have. Neo's got... <laughs> non-perishable food and ammo. Logan, I already got all that. I'm fine but then. Here's what you do. Don't do what Paul just did and say you have that. Fuck him. Fucking try me, bro. Fucking try. Bro, what do you mean? I would have the closest amount of friends that I know, and I already know them. They're all on my phone. At least 10 that would be over here that have just as much as me. Brother, no, nah, you're losing. You're losing. Honestly, that if, and I've thought about it too. And I'm um, going out fighting. And I'll tell you this, and a lot of Americans think this way too. If at any point we get provoked enough to where we go out fighting, motherfucker, some of you are coming with us. I would do an island. An island, like you just a, go out and build an island, or you'd steal it. No, an no, no. I so you'd colonize, you'd white colonize the island. This is mine now. <laughs> so when it comes for me, like unless the food supply and the water is affected, bring twenty. I right, Logan, you know what? My You'll best be food my supply is less than a mile away from me. Like honestly, it's uh, uh, fifty yards away from me right now. Is water like food supply wise? I'm fine. But you the problem is, is you don't you have fresh water? Yes. But most of it's brackish and salt. That's not. That's what not. What are you reliable. talking about? Eight months out of the year, I have fresh water all the time. I have rainwater. Yeah, you can collect rainwater. Yeah, anyone yeah. can do that, though. Yeah, but I have I have food, water. I have ammunition. I have weapons. I but have here's the thing. Did you already start, capabilities. Here's the thing. Did you already start collecting that water yet? No, oh well, uh, yeah, it's in my garage because I always have. I always have. 100 gallons of water on hand in case of an emergency. So just don't shower, you know, yeah. or boil what you already showered. I don't know. I'll pot in your water. What are you saying? I'll pot in your water. I'll shit in your water. Are you going to poop in my water? Logan? Are you... <laughs> no pooping in my water. They all say yeah. all shit flows down river, man. <laughs> Dig a hole in the sand. You'll be all right. Um, Dig it portable. But yeah, I mean, so technically we've already had cyber attacks happening and there's, there's the thing about this movie is it, it started getting produced last year. Right. But there was references made that are like very current. You're like, Oh shit. It's awkward. Yeah. It's a good movie though. It's a very good I'm, movie. I'm definitely going to have to watch it and, and, and tune in. Cause like, I feel like out of the loop and like you explained it well, I'm not saying you didn't, but like at the same point, you're not probably doing it justice. No. Um, Kind of. I gave you the best parts of it, honestly. Like, there is romantic drama. There's, uh, there's some drama in it that you're like, I don't really fucking care for that. I'm here for the the curiosity part of it. Right. Um, and there's probably out of the entirety of the movie, ten minutes worth skipping in my eyes, personally. Okay. Um, that you, it wouldn't change the outcome of what you want to gather from the movie. Uh, honestly, I liked it. Okay. I, I would I rate it on the top movie of the year? For uh, conspiracy, yeah, it's in the top three. Hmm. Okay. Think outside the box. Mm -hmm. It's not the United States. In this movie, who is it? 
Can you ask that again? Can you so put like, that in a sentence? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like in the movie, you're like, you don't know who it is. Yeah. And we don't, you're like, it, it doesn't seem like it's the United States. Who is it? You think then? Oh yeah. Like in Red Dawn, you have Russia and North Korea and China or whatever working together. Very real possibility now still, which is crazy. Who is it and who do you think? Is there any tidbit or any insight where they're like, they give a little bit where they're like, it could be this person that's doing it or or country or whatever? That's kind of why I said the United States was the person at part. Because I'm looking at it on a, a, a geopolitical level of what is the benefit of overthrowing the United States, right? There so isn't. there, there isn't, unless you're talking about getting away from the, the, the gold standard. If you will, or the US. You're not on the gold standard. Well, if you're on the dollar Going, standard. Oh, so like go to the gold standard. Yeah, so crumbling that everything that capitalism has ever done. So for me, I can understand if it was a lot of the Middle East, Russia and China would kind of come together on it. Because when you look at when you look at the capabilities of countries and and uh, cyber attacks and things like that. China comes up front. Um, you have Korea, who also comes pretty close to that. Uh, Russia's kind of a year behind for the most part, but they can still do damage, uh, and they have obviously. Um, so honestly, I think it's a combined effort. If I'm right. looking at it from the movie standpoint, and it wouldn't be one of our allies, but there are a lot. Of, the thing is, that's crazy that people don't realize a lot of our allies, even in the NATO, um, some of them have the best cybersecurity in the world. Like I'll tell you a country that you never expect. One of the best cybersecurity co- like countries in the world and cyber defense countries in the world is France. Yeah. I mean, uh, Logan put it best. In the movie they do say we've made a lot of enemies. Um and those flyers that I have already brought up, Logan, uh <laughs> got to join in quicker than that, but uh we're in a multiple languages. So that's kind of why I'm looking at it of yes, they cause confusion because of that. Um, even Kevin Bacon w- kind of giggled about it. He was like, "That's funny, my buddy over there. Uh, he would have he he served tours in Afghanistan. He would have been able to recognize that language, but the one he received was in Mandarin." Um, so I'm like, "Okay, so could have been um, uh, on a lot of different bases." And I, I mm-hmm. yes, and I think that's the only way it could have happened. Well, like uh, it's just like a rogue state in a sense, like uh, um. Pretty much like a comp. Like, have you ever seen V for Vendetta? I have, yeah. Like a rogue person that has it out for like the establishment, maybe like a rogue fucking company or entity is like, you know what? Fuck the establishment. Fuck the the government. Like, let's make chaos ensue. I mean, that would be a real possibility. It's not really a true singular person. It makes it harder to find and attack then, too. Uh, the like, thing about the know, United States right now, uh, Gade's in the chat right now. He said, uh, don't trust any tech. That's a good way of putting it. Because in the United States, when it comes to actual uh, monitoring of the people, the United States is a little worse than China. <laughs> like, I don't think people understand when it comes to governing over technology, they know everything that's happening. So a group like that happening in the United States, a, a cell, if you will, that's kind of trying to fly under the radar, it's almost impossible, I believe. Like, you're on some sort of database. I guarantee we are on a database because of what we are talking about on the podcast. Or you what know, we have talked about in the past. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that I don't think like, anything, I don't, I don't see anything like that happening. I see it happening in countries where there is not that much data being collected like you got to think about it like this even with biden back in 1984 when he said if israel didn't exist the united states would make israel exist for collecting data on the middle east right that's the only reason why we're in war uh, or we're helping with israel right now by the way is because we want to have at least one ally in the middle east for being able to see what's going on and be able to collect data like Mm -hmm. It's it an would, easy access port on top yeah. of that you have access directly into the Levant and into the Fertile Crescent, which is Syria, Iraq, Iran, you know, Pakistan. Yep. Like, yeah, no, 100%. Um, and we consider, you know, an ally because, you know, it's in a lot, mostly but even evangelicals, like uh, Christians. Like, and we, we don't, we don't, people don't call, a, okay, no, the, the main reason is for the port access. Is port access. 
Um, but it, regardless, I mean, even if we didn't have Israel, you still have the seas that you can go up into, and they're still going to be. Let's have a shot. Know, area. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. They, I got this a is right. fucking dark. I ain't going to lie. It's kind of creepy to think about. Well, I've put a lot of thought into this, and the way I see it is I have a daughter. Right. You know, and I'm I, I want to have her best interests at heart. Um, I want to make sure she's able to grow up in a world that's better than what we have given her uh, or what we were given in the past. Right. You know, if she wants to go to college, I want college to actually mean something one day rather than where it's at now. Um, if she, if she decides to pursue kind of what I did, I'd love to support that. But at the same time, I have no control over the rest of the world, um, no. which and is a good part thing. of being a parent. You, you're going to yeah. always kind of have that constant fear um, that you're, you're just going to always have that. And when I tell you, like, I have in the back of my mind, I, I want to move. It is 100% related to this. Right. The, the fear now, that of That was actually my next happening. question. Yeah. Um, if, say shit hit the fan. Yeah. This is all if. All ifs. Shit yeah. hit the fan. Please tell me, God, you'd make your way up. Or at least try. I don't think I would make it all the way to Ohio. At least try, because like that's your safest bet. Get to me, I, brother. I disagree. Okay. I think honestly, the the safest spot for where I would want to be is probably Nevada or Arizona. How so? So less water, first of all. Maybe Montana. You can handle the cold. Uh, I'll adapt. Yeah, Laura. I mean, your daughter will. Yeah. Bro, another, I hate to thing. say it. If you, you think want about, to survive though. and a shit hit the fan and you needed to leave Florida immediately, your safest bet, if you can make it, is here. Not just because of your friends and family, but mostly because of this friend who has majority of the shit you would need in order to fucking survive. I think what you we should do as a friend group, though, is actually talk about it seriously and say, hey, look, let's find a remote area we all meet up at. I already have it. I got 150 uh, acres with a buddy already. Already got a place. Uh, Nantalhalla in North Carolina. You would say that, Logan. You would. And I respect that. But I'll, you know what, Logan? If, shit hit, if we can make a plan for all of us friend group and shit hit the fan and you, we could load up all of our shit, like all of the perishables that I have, all the water that we already have, the gasoline we have, the ammunition, everything that we have that my father and my brother are already fucking nut preppers about and have, and drive that somehow to North fucking Carolina without anything happening to it, then yeah, I'm down. But the reality of that is, if that shit happened, oh. one of uh, people are going to die on the way wait, to wait, wait, wait. places. You missed the biggest part of the movie. I'm sorry. Cyber attack also includes fully self driving vehicles. So, what did they do with Tesla's self driving vehicle? What did they do with them, though? The cyber attacks, Paul? I bet you can guess. Probably make them lose control and start driving rapidly or accelerating. I don't or turning them off. Back up and blow, uh, not back up, but rear end each other over very like uh, strategic points of travel. So, oh, so blocking travel. Yeah. Hmm. So that, I, again, I have what I need, and I have friends here and family here. I would fortify the fuck out of this here, this area. I, I mean, yeah. Honestly, uh, like, yeah, you're still close to civilization there. But, but far enough where if I need to even go farther, I know areas where to go. Another issue, though, is like you have a very hard to defend area because of the woods. Um, the That's woods what do you mean? You That's have... where I would go take over. 500 mm. acres behind my house. I'd be like, this is ours now. Stop me. You can't, you can't do that with that many people you, for defensible positions. Not well, that you, many people you have your own com you. If you have a, a group, a core group, like say 20 of people and I arm them to the teeth and we train them, bro. Try me. Try me. I feel like we would stand a chance better in hell than most people. Yeah. I guess you got another good point. Would you really want to up and tech introduce way too many aerial attacks? Yeah. Like people don't know. So here's actually something that I learned being somebody that's, that's true. involved they with AI. Launch a nuke. We're all fucked. Here's something I like. Think about it like this. Artificial intelligence is trained off of data set. Right. So you introduce a bunch of data to it. It learns off of that data. But if you were to give that data, if you were to give a command to a drone saying, hey, anything that looks like a civilian or anything that looks like a person, 
fly into it in kamikaze your drone right so say you were to strap a a blasting cap and a little bit of you know gunpowder onto the front end of a drone and it kamikazes into somebody's skull they right? made that already the they swarm. have it yeah. is yeah so think about it though it's trained off of data set of recognizing targets but right? then so that means that means they would that the only way that would work and that, that Os- players would, have... would survive is what i'm know, saying the only <laughs> Yeah, I'm addressing you a furry. Look, no, you, I'm you don't, a furry with a no, fucking no, no. AR. Try me. Uh, no, I'm saying don't look the like only a bipedal. way that would work like, is it, like take another fake leg off to the right or left, put up like four arms around you, so you're walking around antlers. looking like a fucking a no, weird no, creature. You know. Hold on, hold on. Confuse the only way the like that would be a thing is if America was the problem. Like if America was the one that did it. Because if they EMP'd or took down our fucking technology, the drones and everything with it would have been too. It would have well, to be an American tag on American soil on American citizens. Yeah, but for if that you to work, if you were to launch an if you were to be able to uh, destroy the American infrastructure on the ground level, drop a few nuclear bombs on a few major cities that introduces the EMP. After that, essentially, you don't have to worry about your device not being able to transmit data through your own satellites, a different country satellite. So you would yeah. attack satellites that are under U.S. governance, right? Your own satellites position over them, and then next thing you know, you got drones doing the rest of the work for you from another country. Like, the U.S. can't intercept them because... The problem is, is again, they're not just going to fly those over quick. It wouldn't be like, oh, the same day. They'd have to ship them over. They'd have to do the logistics of it to bring them over. That's not happening weeks before. Like, the U.S. government has too much security, not in just our country, but Canada, Mexico, Central America. Yeah, oh, as much yeah. as you think. CIA, think about it like this. the CIA, many... bro, they have shit everywhere, man. So it's common in Fox News, and I'll say it like this because this is how it is. This Fox News is very empty to say. Last year, four hundred thousand like red flagged individuals were seized crossing the border, making that seem like a big deal. That's kind of a good thing, right? Wow, you got four hundred thousand or however many it was. Good job. Yes. There's probably some people they didn't get, right? Oh, that happens um, every day. Yeah, every single day. Like the but odds I'm of talking, a sleeper you're, cell being you're talking in the United large, States is pretty high. You're talking large amount of logistics in order to do drones of that cap- cap- capability to then not only enslave people, but to eliminate people within a large country like this. No, nah, bro. Like, it, that, it that, wouldn't, that, that wouldn't happen. It would, take, it would take months either after the attack to formulate that, or they'd have to stockpile before. And if they were before, we would know about it. Mm. I'll tell you why. Back in 2013, and this is the level of technology. Di- this is the level though? level of technology difference between the U.S. military and most everyone else. 2013, two Iranian uh, fighter jets were going on an intercept course to bring down a Predator drone. Right. Okay. For 15 minutes, an F-23 Raptor was under them. They had no idea, and they not only identified who the pilots were looked at the stockpile of arsenal on the weapons and then asked to engage or to not engage to their commanding officer without iran even knowing it and then they said do not engage scare them off you know what the pilot said he pulled up next to him and said you should probably leave now and they fucking were pissed their pants logan said you lost me at iranian jet um but they do iran has jets buddy Gabe put something in the chat that I have not heard of. Let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. DuxNet is a malicious computer worm first uncovered in 2010 and thought to have been in development since at least 2005. Stuxnet targets supervisory control and data acquisition systems and is believed to be responsible for causing substantial damage to nuclear program of Iran. Although neither country has openly admitted responsibility, multiple independent news organizations recognize Stuxnet to be a cyber weapon built jointly by the United States and Israel in collaboration effort known as Believe Operation it. Olympic Games. It was done during that. the Bush administration. Now, I've never that. heard of that. Mm-hmm. Operating 100%. systems affected. Windows 2000 all, all the I way guess up to My main thing that I was getting at is when it comes to our military budget, we obviously spend the most, but our military technology and assets are extremely superior to most pe- most countries no like it, t- we're we're 10 years ahead of most countries oh, and, and some even farther yeah uh, and, and, and people thought our biggest like 
biggest like concern would be Russia. And then we saw our weapons being used by Ukrainians with a few months of training just completely knock theirs out. And we're like, oh, Russia, you talk a big game, bud, but you ain't. Yeah. Well, that's like Russia. They just now released their the new F6 or F sixth gen fighter. And pretty much they released not everything, but a list of things that were on the fighter to compete with are 33 and, th and 23, uh, you know, stealth jets. Not even close, bub. Like, so, not, not even in the same realm, dude. You got to think about, Logan put it in here. What do our, every single one of our defense capabilities rely on? Technology, absolutely. Satellite but the thing is, is, here's the thing. Not like, maybe, I don't know this number, but maybe half. Of our military assets are actually on mainland, Bubby. Mm. You have You're to realize that the other half are in water. Our, our entire naval fleet, which majority of our planes are on, are in the ocean. They can still be impacted by not by any EMP satellite. Satellite, their satellites will be down, but they still have power. They're all nuclear like, powered. A most uh, every single navigation system on a boat is completely satellite driven nowadays. Not Everything. radar. You radar is from the boat itself. Radar is from the boat itself, but that still doesn't in, uh, that when it comes to actual navigation systems, no, it's just letting you know what's there, which helps you navigate. It it would be a manual navigation, like we've never done that before. Most 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 naval officers still have to go through orientation on how to use a map and compass, dude. That's part of their training in the naval academy still. Do New ranger, rangers still have to do training for orientation in the dark without a flashlight using a map and compass. That's still a training today. That's good training. I'm saying we, we have trainings in place for if there's an EMP attack. I had to do it. And I was a base level grunt, dude. The thing about it, though, is think about it like this. Think about it like this, right? The, the concept behind the movie was the U.S. lost satellite control, which immediately put an upper hand on the right. enemy. The enemy right. doesn't have that issue. They're still able to operate. We, we lose our satellites. 20 though. years ahead of us. We lose our satellites. I mean, it would be a big impact, but I feel like we find a way around it. I do. We have other means of communication outside of the United States. I mean, shit, one of our largest bases for U.S. military bases is in Africa. Think about that. Yeah. Djibouti. Literally. You want to do what to my booty? That's what it's called. Djibouti, Africa. You want to chew yeah. my booty? Yeah, we have bases all around the world with military assets going into the trillions and trillions of dollars, dude. Like all the stuff that's on mainland, that's 20 years old. Here's National Guard actives. We had shit from freaking 1990s in the 80s still. All the new shit is not here. It's not yeah. in the United States. Yeah, and we, if we ever got attacked, it. if we ever got attacked on mainland, I tell you so fucking fast, the Seventh Fleet would be here in two weeks. That is a good point, Logan. Just put in there wouldn't be any communication between mainland and, and them. Here's the bit. Here's here's another thing though that we don't have. Like yes, we don't have radio and stuff like that. But there is something that's still in place that was put in the 1940s, and that's landlines under the Atlantic Ocean that we use for I don't know Morse code. And guess what? We still have people that know how to do it. That's still training. We still have that, which is also a system that's easily broken. No, we have we have fucking fallbacks. What do you mean? We had people. The Germans tried to hack our system throughout the entire war, and we had fucking things to deter them. There's we used to have a. Have you never seen Wind Talkers, me guy? Come on, you've never seen the movie Wind Talker. Yeah, oh. Cypher and Morris Code is something though that like yeah you can try to communicate with them, but the enemy will still have an upper hand. The they will. The satellites are not. We will out. always find a way. Dude. I'm sorry. Like we will. We'll always find a way. A ground invasion is impossible. the only way that that would work is if America was behind it itself. Which is what the third part of it is, civil war. We don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, well that's, that's civil war. I'm talking a complete collapse of the United States government, which that would not be. They would not go down easy. You're telling me this government that has likes control around the world is going to let it happen in their own homeland? I think eh, that could happen. Know. It could. It's unlikely. That's all I'm saying. I'm being the optimistic. Yeah, optimistic or the devil's conscientious optimist. Whatever you want to say, uh, it's it can be it could happen. I'm not saying that, but I find it unlikely. 
Do you think the Pledge of Allegiance will be mandatory again after something like this? Who knows? As long as they take Under God out of it, I don't really give a shit. Yeah. Uh, we didn't talk about sunspots. We got five minutes. We have a lot. I had some other things I wanted to talk about. Um, do we want to do the sunspots or the Olympics? Let's, uh, let's. The Olympics kind of pissed me off. I ain't gonna lie. Let's do the Olympics and then uh, we'll call it. Okay. So obviously, most of you know that the Olympics are going to be coming to North America. You know, we have Canada, America, Mexico into a joint international committee for the Olympics. What year? 2028, if I remember correctly, is when it is going to be here. Okay. Um, so they have entered in American and Central American and North American games to commemor com commemorate this. Lacrosse is one of them. Okay. Um, so the one thing that really pissed me off is for years, lacrosse has been included in the United States as games and not Olympic, but in the, in the United States and Native American communities who created this game have been considered sovereign. You know, they have their own territories. They're not overlooked by the U.S. government. They're not taxed. They're, they're sovereign. They're their own fucking thing. Um, and the, uh, I'm so going to murder this, the Ashutofi, I'm sorry, tribe. Uh, oh, they're, the the tribe. They're, they're the literally the ones that invented the game of lacrosse, has filed to play as a sovereign nation or mm -hmm. sovereign team in the game specifically because they created the game of lacrosse. That's it would be fine. awesome. That's cool. Like, yeah. yes, they're, they're in America, but they're the, they're the tribe that made this game. The Olympic Committee has shut them down because they don't see them or recognize them on a gro global scale as being a sovereign nation. Ooh. So then they appealed it, saying we're not going under sovereign nation. We're, they're going to try to do it like what Korea did uh, a couple years back, where they're like, they want to compete under this flag, specifically in remembrance of their heritage as the tribe creating the game. They okay. still shut it down. Wow. The Olympic Games is not letting the community and the tribe that invented this game, that they're going to be pulling millions of dollars, billions probably of dollars in because they're not their own sovereign nation. Even though us as the United States look at them as they are, it's because they're not on a global scale. Where's it going to be held? There's, so they're going to be in multiple stadiums and arenas throughout Mexico, Canada, and the U S oh, that's cool. Which is very cool. Different. Um, I'm excited for that, but this got my blood fucking boiling. Like, I got right. irritated. Like, you're going to make a big deal about, a, a, you know, Native American, North American culture, and then you're not going to let them compete in it? You know like, who they should get involved? Excuse me, what? Land who? of Lakes. <laughs> why, why? Like, the fucking butter company? Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck off. Oh, that no, it it it, ir it irritated me. Um, oh, how am I? Gonna, I wanted to pronounce it correctly, but I'm I'm just gonna catastrophically murder that that name, and I apologize to the tribe. Some are very easy to say. Um, some are definitely not. Hasha Hashawani, Hashatani. Um, either uh, we never know. You never know. It takes one native to be like, "How dare you?" But I'm a little. Some people are, but either way, doesn't that irritate? So that's a, that's, that's like going. To Ireland and like a tribe back in the day invented, uh, you know, what is that game? Not curling, handball. What's, what's the one? Rock with the throwing. No, no, it's the it's the thick one with the thing, and it's not. What is it called? Hurling, hurling. I don't know. That's like telling them that they can't shot play that put. fucking spot. No, it's not shot put. That's the throwing of the stone. It's the one with the stick where you can fucking hit the ball. I don't know. I'm terrible with that curling. No, curling's the oh, ice. Curling's one. a Canadian sport. That's Canada. And they're fucking awesome until America whoops that ass in the Winter Olympics. But <laughs> either way, there I, I guess there's a list of other games that are considered uh North American um that they're gonna be adding into the Olympic. I guess there's a list online you can look at. But that one specifically stood out to me and irritated me. Because also this team is very good. Like they right. would go to nationals um in, in the United States and absolutely wipe the fucking floor with you know like you know collegiate teams and meanwhile these people these these men and women are playing with original wooden lacrosse sticks and woven horsehair sticks and kicking our ass at them well meanwhile we got fiberglass and top of the line fucking you know sticks and balls and stuff these guys they're the pros they're the ones that did it and you're not letting them compete in their sport like man we really need to rethink this this olympic committee like who is on who sits on an olympic committee that's what i want to know like, who fucking chooses this shit? Bunch of white people. I don't know. It's Olympic. It could be international. But still, like, 
it, it just irritated me. And it was something that I feel like a lot of people should know so about. Let me get this reach right. out about. Let me get this right. Right. You had some motherfucker one day as uh, uh, who's a comedian that everyone's kind of fallen in love with right now, who kind of looks like he has a touch of the tism. Shane. Yeah. Shane Gillis. Yeah. Shane Gillis. As he puts it, some motherfucker one day sat down and be like, Hey, what if we let them play? You know, I'm talking about the special Olympics. The Hogashoni. But, I got it right. Hogashoni is how you pronounce it. I apologize. Okay. Go on. But you still can't recognize a native culture. Right. They can't recognize that. And they're going to not only technically steal this from them, they're going to profit from this. They're going to promote it as Native American nationalism. They're going to have the flags. They're going to be able to be, like, come to it and show that they invent, invented it. But then they're not allowed to play in it. That's hypocrisy is what that is. It if is. you allow something that isn't to the norm of what's conceived as a a, a sport, right? right? And then you don't allow somebody to show their true culture on it. Like, that's kind of the point of, of the Olympics. Right. And honestly, if they do not fix this before then, we have some years, right? If they don't mm. fix this before then, I, I'm I'm fully okay with boycotting the fuckers. I'll be behind that. Sure. Should I, should I make Native, a TikTok? Yeah, we should. Because the Native Americans deserve... To how I mean, we they get screwed enough as it is. They really I mean, we, the, hey America, we killed a lot of them. Yeah, and they they've been screwed enough. And I'm sorry if they want to play the game they they freaking invented. They have every goddamn right to do so. Logan, I'm point zero zero three seven percent Iroquois. It doesn't basically matter. zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically zero. I'm also point zero zero three seven percent Haitian, <laughs> so hey, it really give should. me that free college. <laughs> no, all, all I'm saying, and I'm not even just saying it's me or anyone else. I'm just saying them as a nation. I'm worried about them. They are the ones that did it. They're the best at the game. They're the ones that put it on the ballot to be in the fucking Olympics, and okay. then the Olympic Committee says no. That is one hundred percent with you, dude. Yeah, that irritates That's me. That's a guy man. that has zero, one hundred percent zero. Well, yeah, you're, you, you're like the you're like the German poster boy, bub. <laughs> Hitler loved my kind. Okay, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> and he wasn't even blonde. <laughs> the Filipino in the chat. I'm point zero zero seven percent Italian. Italian. <laughs> hey, motherfucker! I'm mostly Italian. All right. <laughs> all right guys gals days and thems thank you so much for joining drunk discussions podcast this one was a fucking hoot and a half it uh, was if, it, if you got a little depression from it it's okay welcome to 2023 baby uh yeah. this was the second episode of our christmas special uh hold we on, are coming hold on, up hold on. hold on i have to fucking call it. logan just because you have it in your blood doesn't mean you have to be a citizen of that country that's the great thing about america so we are a melting pot we are you're not 100% white. We just won't, we we just won't recognize it in the Olympic Games. Yeah, okay? we're just going to fucking recognize it, all right? So chill your shit in the comments, boy. Either yeah. way, if you're upset about this, people, you should reach out for real. Like, I'm about to send messages and shit. It pissed me off. It pissed a I'll lot start of people a petition. off. We should. We should petition the hell out of this. Because no, those seriously. boys, those men and women deserve to play. I started a petition to get uh, to put a age <laughs> requirement on the Senate and the House. So let's do it. Uh, Let's do it. I'm down. We should start that on TikTok. Make it get more traction. Cheers to that. Cheers to you Cheers, guys. Buddy. Cheers, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Mm. And with that being said, peace. peace.